Justice League, welcome back to part two of Breaking News, episode four. I'm Mike Frusios. Joe Warren. And we just discussed a whole bunch of cool, like, hardcore platformers, you know, accessible platformers. Now we're getting into some space games, some strategy. So let's start, and some survival horror. So let's start off with uh, a big AAA game on a lot of people's radar. And this has got some pressure on it, Joe, because of what came before. We're talking about Alien Isolation coming out from Creative Assembly and Sega. So, you know, if anybody's been sleeping under a rock for like the last couple of years, why is there so much pressure on this game to succeed, Joe? I think because uh, Colonial Marines, I mean, just was just not a woman for it. But, but, but this looks like it is finally gonna give this, uh, the you know, the, the Alien uh, universe, it's finally gonna be a game that kind of you know, we're we're going to get our new fans, I think. Does, does some real justice. Yeah, so unlike Kaleo Marines, which, is, which was kind of a spiritual successor to the second Aliens film by James Cameron, this one actually takes place 15 years after the first Alien film by Ridley Scott. Yes. So you are actually playing, not as Ripley, but as her daughter, yep. Amanda. Okay, so what's Amanda up to? It's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's taking place uh, you know after her disappearance or whatnot. Yeah. But you know what's really cool is that it's done in the first person perspective. It's it's very it's not the uh, first person sure which they could have you know copped out and done. This is really going for survival or So it puts it more in the league of like amnesia, dark descent for PC or even the recent Outlast, Outlast yeah. for PC PS4. Um, it's first person, not a lot of stuff going on. It's more about sound atmosphere, quiet versus noise, and, and, and just surviving with the very barest of elements, you know, whatever you have, whatever you can craft to, to kind of find out what happened to your mother and solve the mystery of, about what happened on this ship. And it's not like uh, like Blue Marines where you're just attacking kind of waves of aliens. This is more of like a down and dirty, just one on one. And most of the time, you know, a lot of times, uh, what can be the scariest are things that you, you're, you can't see or you're just kind of hearing. This is it, it really, uh, Going for that, I think this is going to be a game kind of like Outlast, where it's going to genuinely creep and scare you out. Yeah, yeah, because that was the problem when I played Three Aliens Colonial Marines, and that's what a lot of people criticized the Colonial Marines game for, was the fact that all these Xenomorphs are just running everywhere, and there's no real AI going on, they're just, they're all kind of pissed off, they're all jumping around and yeah. running at you, whereas this, you see, you know, the, the Xenomorphs creeping around one by, just maybe one solitary one, just kind of this foreboding presence and you don't have enough ammo or you don't have enough health to really take it on, you just want to run. And that's what really Aliens is about. Like mm -hmm. it's not about full on hardcore action, it's about it again, just a very quiet, constrictive experience. And that's what this game is. I mean, it's very dark, mm -hmm. very little light. It's got that claustrophobic, you know, experience that the game, the genre really needs. It's, it's funny, the, the, alien, the Aliens game, uh, that this really deserves. And <clears throat> I think we're finally gonna get that with this game. Yeah, absolutely. So this is uh, supposed to be coming out this year, uh, hoping probably towards maybe summer or fall for like a holiday release. So again, if, you, if, you, if you've had it up to here well, with all the Aliens games, I think this is finally where we're supposed to be going with this, with some true attention being paid to what made the franchise great to begin with. And, and coming up for, for most of the major platforms, PC, all the PlayStation platforms, with the exception of Vita and Xbox One and 360. Yeah, so whatever you're playing on, you'll be able to get a taste of this. So that's Alien Isolation from Creative Assembly and Sega looking to redeem the Aliens franchise. Next up, wow, okay, this <laughs> one, this, this, this next news, I have a feeling about this, Joe, this is gonna be big. This is going to be possibly in the league of becoming like oh, the next World of Warcraft. Star Citizen from Chris Roberts, who we know is famous for making Wing Commander. Awesome. So what? why is this going to be big, Joe? Well, first of all, I think Chris Roberts has, has an incredible amount of cash from back in the day. I mean, this guy, the Wing Commander game, I mean, they were huge. They were extremely popular. I was personally very fond of them. I mean, this game is exciting because, it, you know, to, to be honest, this is probably the most ambitious game that the guy I've ever seen. Period. Yes. I mean, like, let's look, talk about all levels. Like, look at the the the, the, the graphics first of all, the yeah. detail in the ships. Like, we're talking about hundreds of moving parts 
that are based on real space technology. I mean, we're talking about some major players that Chris Roberts has aligned himself to, to, to get the authenticity of these ships. So we're talking about like we're talking about like aerospace companies like Anvil, Origin Jump Works, Musashi Industrial, and Starflight Concern, Drake Interplanetary, and Aegis Dynamics. Chris Roberts is not fucking around here. And he and he's being blatant that this is a PC gaming, which he which the trailer is kinda like joking around, oh PC gaming disappeared while well, it's back. When, when, when this does come out, I mean you're gonna need you're gonna need the top of the, uh, of the line right to run this. And uh, you know, this is being touted as sort of uh, from what early on what we saw when we watched some of the uh, the, uh, the this developer diary that we watched. It was uh originally kind of gonna uh, I was looking at uh, be mainly like a massively online multiplayer, but there's also a full-on single-player story-driven game in this as well. Yeah, let's break that down. So yeah, you have your, you basically you have your perpetual online, your persistent online experience where it plays on without you, so that you're part of this giant, this giant universe. This you are a star citizen, literally, and, and you're basically trying to make your fame and fortune as a space pirate, aligning yourself with certain squadrons, fighting others in, in this massive play world. Now, if that seems too heavy for you and too time intensive, they're breaking this down in half. There is a single player component, like you mentioned, Joe, called Squadron 42. So, so tell us about why that's cool. Why well, that's cool is that uh, it's also gonna incorporate with the multiplayer with a little bit too. And it's, uh, you know, the, you know, I was a little, when we first started watching this, I was thinking that it was just going to be an online multiplayer game, but to, to have a full-on single player, I mean, that's what Wing Commander was always known for, it was, it was that good. So it's nice, it's, it's nice that, there, that there's going to be a nice mix of the two. This is basically their way to do the next-gen mission-based story-driven Wing Commander within a larger experience. Yeah, and, and I think that's a big reason why this is going to be strictly on PC, is that, that I think it's going to be just a little too much for the consoles. And like you say, he's, he's said, you know, this is... This it is going to be just a PC game, and it's evolving all the time, like Minecraft. Yes. You know, like it, it, it's gonna it's gonna be defined about by how how users basically experience this game and how they and the feedback that comes out of that. Um, but even like hardware aside, like having a beefed up PC, you need like a really strong online community and server base to support such an ambitious project. I mean, we're talking about hundreds of star systems and when you land there, we're talking about some detail in these cities. You get out of that ship and it becomes a first person exploration RPG game. I mean, Shades of Mass Effect here, Shades of Destiny. And we're not talking about like very simplistic worlds, we're talking about like like multiple sandboxes that yeah. you, you can play in. I, I don't think we're going to see this game in the next 12 months. No, it's gonna it's gonna take it uh, it's gonna take some time and uh, that, that's not a bad thing. You know, I, I, th I think taking the time. I, I, th I think this has probably been uh, in development the longer than most people kind of realize and not really he's letting on. But uh, I'm gonna say you know what, take your time to make it because I think I think it's gonna be something that's well worth the wait. It, it, if you're gonna be able to have a PC that's gonna be able to run. Yeah, exactly. But you know, just so many ways to define your experience within this and make it unique to yourself but even again like if you're not into that massive experience of playing with others there's still something for for the solitary gamer to sink their teeth in and, and enjoy so i'm really looking forward to this right now again only pc that could change depending on you know developments with cloud gaming on consoles direct x with xbox maybe near the end of this eighth generation we could see something like this but for now pc only and that is coming from Cloud Imperium, which is basically Chris Roberts' uh, new handle, and you can check out more online. He's got lots of videos up there. Staying in the realm of outer space, moving on to our next game. This one looks, looks pretty fun and arcade-y, uh, with, with some de direct influences and references to Velocity, a game we talked about last breaking news. This one's called The Next Penelope from Aurelian Regard. That's actually the name of the developer who used to be part of Arquito Studio, and they were famous for the Arquito series on PS3, uh, Jump Swap and Pixel, which which were pretty simple minimalist games, very pretty looking. Uh, what did you see from this one, Joe, next Penelope? The, 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 this looks like a really, really cool top-down racing game with uh, some really cool elements, like being able to teleport past certain things, and just, uh, you know, it's a, uh, you know, it's a very future, futuristic, twitchy. I mean, it, this looks like it's going to be just a really cool, futuristic racing game. Yeah, you know, like I said, they, the, the developer admits they were they were actually inspired by Velocity Ultra, also known as Velocity 2X, coming to PS4 and Vita. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you've got the teleporting, the twitchy gameplay, very high speed. 
you can crash at any time, so it's got Shades of Spy Hunter in that sense. Mm -hmm. But also, it, so it, it reminds me at first of Rock and Roll Racing. The mm -hmm. fact that not only can you warp, you can also shoot bombs and missiles. It's got that combat racing element. But then, t jumping off of that, you've got these mad, mad, badass boss battles. Yes. Yeah. So Which it, is what makes it different from Velocity. Yeah, so, and because and that, that this is kind of serving to discover as a racing game, but it's combined with uh, some of these old kind of, you know, top-down space shooters that we've seen before, so it's really incorporating some really cool elements. Yeah, and just some fantastic use of color. It's, it's not mm -hmm. going for the typical blues, metallic grays, and everything of like a space game, but it's actually going for that more trippy kind of kind of kind of vibe to the, like the spacey space shooter. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, some really cool, like very indie. This one's only for PC at this point, but uh, you know, I, I can see with games like Velocity coming out that this this, this is going to catch fire. And again, it's just one of those really hardcore, twitchy, arcadey games that I think a lot of people can recognize and, and sink your teeth into. Um, again, staying in outer space here, uh, moving into another kind of arcadey genre. This one is is in the works. It's called Project Cipher Cyber. Project Cyber from Spearhead Games, probably coming out sometime this year. Now, I don't even know if this name is going to say the same. It seems like it's like a working title because this is a game in progress. So you, you, you struggled with, with this one at first, trying to figure out what this was about. You, you seem to get it now. Why why added this to the list? What, what is this game about? So th this is basically taking place on, uh, on a moving... Uh, you're basically you're playing uh, like a team-based foosball of, in the future kind of a game on top of a ship which is flying over th through the city. Yes. So uh, immediately I think it's going to be a very cool multiplayer kind of fast-paced sports game for people who I think don't seriously like sports games. Yeah, it, it, it reminds me, like the immediate thing I thought of when I first saw this was Speedball, that old mm -hmm. Midway classic yep. where it was it was kind of like a soccer slash football set in, in the future vibe. Um, but yeah, you've got this crazy multiplayer element and, and like you said, this game was inspired by a game of foosball. So you, you can see that in the mechanics of, of, of how you pass and shoot the ball and move around the field. There's almost kind of like a, 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 a kinetic pinball vibe to it. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. And and, and, uh, and the, the ship the, the ship that you're, you're playing on is, is actually, and the gameplay is actually influenced by the way the ship is flying or like say like the, like with the wind kind of blowing through the sea. So that also affects the gameplay. Very so, interesting so, point, yeah. So, the, so there, there's some interesting uh, stuff going on here. It's not just a straight up, uh, by looking at it, it's, it's, there's more going on, I think, than uh, when I, I, you realize looking at it at first glance. Yeah, it, it's, it's going back to like how environmental factors can really change the nature of the game. When, like Maybe the ship decides to do a quick left and goes through yeah. hyperspace. All of a sudden, you're kicking the ball and it's being thrown back in your face because the velocity is going west or whatever. Mm -hmm. So many things to, to, to take in here. But I see this game getting big bigger because what they've stressed is that this is going to be a very community-driven game like Minecraft, like Star Citizen, a game that builds over time. It's never really finished, it just keeps adding things based on player feedback. So what I would really like to see, say, like I'm gonna be, we're gonna be probably trying the beta soon on Betamax, because I have the beta for Project Cyber. What I really wanna see is, is like customizable players, like with different shots, different defense abilities, maybe special moves, and I wanna see more environmental effects, like maybe the ship yes. that you're playing on crashes. What yeah. happens then? Or crashes, or maybe it turns around. Or a meteor hits the, the field, direction. or something, and changes the layout of the field, or something. Yeah. I, I think there's a lot of room for expansion, but even with what the game is now, mm -hmm. I think you can just have a fun time. Again, if you're not, if, if you're overburdened by how like how serious sports games have become, you you yearn for the days of the arcade games where you didn't have to worry about formations and plays and and all this kind of stuff. You just want to get in there and have a good competitive time, like old school era. I think this is going to be right up people's alley. Absolutely. So that is Project Cyber uh, from Spearhead Games. You can actually uh, request a beta for them if you Google search them mm -hmm. and check that out. Finally, for part two, uh, kind of spinning around but staying in like the strategy uh, multiplayer arena, taking it out of space and going back into the old west, we have a game I talked about a long time ago on my old show called Secret Ponchos. It, we're getting closer to release, and I finally showed this to you, Joe. So, what did you see from Secret Ponchos? People are people are liking what they've seen. It, it seems like it's a simple game, but I think there's more to this. Well, this is is, is going to be an online only, only game with uh, some some different uh, modes, uh, a one on one, and some uh, some team based kind of stuff. But it, it's taking place in, in an un, underrepresented genre as the Spaghetti Western. Yes. I mean, we've seen shades of it, like in Qual of War, as 
and, and going back Sunset Riders for the arcade Super Nintendo Genesis. Sure. But I mean, the Western genre isn't really exploited too much. I mean, really, Red Dead Redemption was the last major Western game, and that wasn't spaghetti Western. I was saying that that was more like a John Ford Western versus what we're seeing here, more on the Sergio Leone, Clint, what, Clint Eastwood, you know, good, bad, and the ugly territory. Yeah, even, even in, in, in the art style, and it just looks like it's going to be a very, uh, and you can even do some uh, some local split screen online multiplayer as well. Yes. So, so you can uh, be sit, be sitting and uh, playing online, and you can have a buddy come over and you can join in on the action as well. So you mentioned that this game is only online. Yes. There I, there's two modes that we know of so far. What are those modes? Basically a one on one, and then uh, one on one deathmatch, just multiple rounds, just and then an eight player kind of. Frenzy and melee deathmatch. So yeah. uh, it's just again a very simple game, but you know, simple competitive games like this, like like Towerfall Ascension, for instance, are making waves, and they don't have to have too much about them. Just fantastic, fluid mechanics, cool environments, and, and really good sound design. And I think you, that can make a, a pretty pretty playable experience. Plus, we've got different character classes with different weapons, so different ways of approaching each battle. I, I think this is going to make some waves. So this one's coming out for. PC and PS4 only. It was originally only intended as a PS4 exclusive, but I think because of the buzz they were getting, and, and they were getting pressured to put this out on Steam, and I think that's a good thing because we need to see more jump in and jump out like frenzy multiplayer games. And I like think this. That they're, they're going to have a unique game by, by being probably one of the ones I'm aware of, being like a spaghetti western online kind of a game. You know, Absolutely. You know, so that they, they definitely got something unique there, and it definitely looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, so, so again, like whether you're whatever play, platform you're playing on, I mean, so much great stuff to look forward to. That's part two. We still got more for you, so we're gonna come back in a bit with part three and some more crazy, like multi genre kind of stuff. So stay tuned to Joystick Justice League. We'll be back with more breaking news in a sec.